Hello, ladies, freshies. My name is Charles Butel. Welcome to Fresh, all the way from Bristol, England. Here's all we've got for you, Freshies, today. What you tell her? Oh, she's got... Where's she going? Get away from me! I think rugby-wise, it's definitely the hardest decision I had to make to let go of that jersey. But at the same time, it was the easiest in terms of being able to support my family financially. You know you're fresh when you're in England and you're still wearing your jandals, but it's winter. <laughs> Cinderella is about a young girl named Sina facing the hardships of everyday life. Cinderella is loosely based on the fairy tale Cinderella, but what we wanted to do is that we wanted to incorporate um, a South Auckland Pacific twist. I think it's a very um, coming of age story for not only Cinderella, but a lot of the characters really, um, sort of coming into their own sort of headspace. It's a story full of laughter, Polynesian vibes, drama, emotions. It's really fun because they're all like Pacific and you can relate to it. Hi, Ron Selena. I'm Prince. Hi, Prince. Uh, you want to go on a date tomorrow by any chance? I would love to. Uh -huh. Hey, Ron Selena. Who's that behind you? Oh, it's only eight of my brothers. Oh. <laughs> Personally, me, this has always been a passion, acting on stage and showing case, showing our talents. And yeah, do it for my family. I feel like it's a responsibility. Um, for me, to um, share stories for my people um, because it's not the norm for Polynesian people to um, be in a theatre space. But I feel like it's a responsibility for me to share my story and share it through theatre, I guess, and just with everyone. In the Having a cast of this mass size and also having so many different ages from literally nine years old all yep. the way up till 45. Being able to craft this show, which Rocky has done really, really well um, throughout these times, is, yeah, it's just been a real great um, success so far. I love just the experience, like learning new things the dancers interacting with each other. It was really awesome and funny. The show was amazing. It had all the aspects of like the culture, religion. I loved it. We're the cast of Cinderella and we are King. Welcome to another week of uh, Oh Is It? So what's the topic uh, this week, uh, right? Oh uh, Well, today it's about uh, the Polynesian influence on rugby and rugby league around the world. Uh, straight away, I think about the 1970s, uh, the first Polynesian outlet was uh, someone, P.G. Williams. Oh, of course. Yeah, Brian George William. He was uh, a hero of mine growing up. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And when you think about on the rugby league side on the 1970s, it was guys like uh, Alzen Filipina, the Sorensen brothers, Fred Akoi. Oh, yes. Yeah, these ones are very uh, influential on the league. 
Oh, far that's mean as. So who was like the influence of the Polynesians in the 80s? Ah, oh, where do you start? Yeah, exactly. You are in rugby league. 1980s to me was like the Robati brothers, the Luluwais. Yeah, exactly. In, in a rugby way, it said uh, Michael Jones. Now it's uh, Michael Jones. Hmm. Charles Stanley, Arlo Brown, Johnny Schuster. Ah, oh, that's mean as. What about in the 90s? Oh, in the 90s. Okay, uh, I'll do the rugby and you do the league, uh, Rocha. Okay. Inga da winga tuinga mala. Uh, Ruben Wookie. Uh, Irony Clark. The Iro Brothers. Alama Iremia. Joe and Nigel Vangana. Okay, go for it. Let's go for the 2000s. Okay. <coughs> Tana Umanga. Manu Vatuvoi. Ma'anano. Uh, what about a Sunny Pear William? What about a uh, Sunny Pear William? What are you talking about? I just said a Sunny Pear William. Yeah, but he's played at both a rugby and a rugby league. I forgot all about it. Yeah, mm. that's right. He played both. He's the man, eh? You know, when you look at it, eh? Heaps of the world are starting to copy what New Zealand started. That's absolutely true, right? Yes, yes. Okay, okay. If you if you want to go there, back in the day, Wales asked me to play with them, and uh, I turned it down. <coughs> you, you was going to play for Wales? True, um, Uncle Roger. I've seen photos of Uncle playing with Wales. Yeah, look at this photo, Uncle. <laughs> nah, nah, come on, guys, not funny. Come on, be mature. Be mature about it, eh? <laughs> nah, nah, goodbye, you should try. I'm sick of talking to you guys. Nah, this is stupid things. Don't go anywhere, top boys, because we've got this freshness coming. <laughs> KFC is probably still my favorite takeaway, so try to get away with that. But I think the, the trainers are trying to uh, keep me away from that. X. Tension. Extension. Go. Matthew, what's wrong? Um, one of my favorite animals is about to go into extension, and you know, there's like, um, there's the white rhino, there's Mickey Mouse, David Duck, and mm. Bound Puppies. Mm. Extinction. <laughs> extension. I'm gonna keep it real with you. Welcome back to Fresh, all the way from Bristol, England. Oh, I forgot the line. I'm Charles Beardle. <laughs> forgot my name. I'm Charles Beardle, and this is my world. Oh, mate, I wouldn't battle any of uh, I think the Severe brothers, you know, they've definitely got some dancers, and uh, I don't know, I think I just saw Channing Tatum uh, in, the, in, the, in London lately, so uh, I wouldn't battle him, but, you know, probably try to learn some moves off him. <laughs> in Mangry, South Auckland, so that was uh, home for me. Born there, bred there, and uh, it's a far away place now. Where are we going to a guide? Pretty famous uh, bridge here in uh, Bristol, so let's go and check it out. See if it's uh, anything like the bridge in Auckland. <laughs> I first came over to, to the UK in 2015, and so I've been living here since. Leaving Auckland and New Zealand and coming into London was the first city that I moved to was a uh, massive change. Obviously, uh, not seeing any many islanders around, like uh, Auckland or South Auckland. I guess how busy the city was in London. And then the biggest one, I think, was the weather. I went mean, down it's cold as, I got checking there for my channels and people just like. <laughs> You know, I guess for us polys, you know, we grow up with, you know, big families or we could grow up in the village and stuff. And I guess, you know, you're used to having that community type feel, that big family feel. And so when you're coming, for myself, coming into, I guess, the Bristol Bears and, and having so many Islanders in the team has been great. My wife will say for the first time I'm making a coffee, but why not go do it for the guests? Huge blessing and grateful to have my brother here in the same team and his family. So there's always um, nice having him just down the road and always seeing him at trainings and, and getting to play along uh, aside each other. 
My brother's trying to get a, a, a kind of machine built so we can um, put a pig on the spit. So I think it's not too far away and we're hoping that we can get one sorted for Christmas. So it'd be good for all the family and the islanders here. Looking for some food because we're hungry. <laughs> I'd say probably food at times, you know, a lot of the island food, mum's cooking, a bit of uh, loo, taro and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, that'd be the biggest probably thing other than uh, missing the family as well, yeah. Nice and hot, fresh. <laughs> to be fair, obviously we're still playing professional sport, but can't get away from the bakeries. Uh, and even back home man here, KFC is probably still my favourite takeaway, so try and get away with that every now and then, but I think the, the trainers are uh, trying... Uh, Keep me away from that. What are you doing in your spare time here, bro? To be honest, lately, it's uh, been a fortnight. Been busy playing Fortnite. Uh, a few of the boys uh, were squatting up here after training, so we wouldn't have uh, spare time, so trying to, trying to get better at that. <laughs> I think the, my favourite thing being kind of over here in Europe is, I guess, Having so many countries, you know, down, you know, just a couple of hours away, so you know, being able to travel and, and see so many different places is uh, definitely, um, you know, a highlight or, or a great thing being over here in the UK. You know, when you first moved up here, because you're, you know, you're, you're an all black, mm. was it was it a hard decision? Yeah, uh, I think rugby wise is definitely the hardest decision I had to make in my career. Um, you know, thinking to let go of that jersey and, you know, kind of pursue a uh, career over here and overseas. But at the same time, it was the easiest in terms of being able to support my family financially. And I guess for me, you know, the bigger picture, seeing them happy and, and myself, you know, in that sense, uh, it was easy. For Pacifics, and we're fresh out of the box. 4R stands for uh, refuse, reduce, reuse, and recycle. We are going down to the reef where there is uh, a lot of rubbish. This is, that's where the current takes uh, some of the rubbish on the shore. It's really, really bad. I mean, like, the plastic is killing our salmon. We are picking up rubbish and picking up plastic and we are uh, recycling. The aim is to create a better and cleaner Samoa for the next generation. Don't put your hands together. It's important for us to do what we're doing because if we don't, nobody else will. We want to live in an, an environment where we see green grass and trees and not plastic. The group I'm affiliated with, the student Rotaract of USP, we're all from the ages of 19 to 23 and 24. And why we chose this is because most of the people in Samoa, the ones that are littering and dumping plastic, is all between that age. If we chose to make a difference, instead of uh, adding to the problem, but try and, and solve the problem, if we do that, we can inspire the people that are the same age as us to do the exact same thing and come up with a solution in the process of uh, recycling and uh, reducing. It's really important because we have one home and we have to look out for it. We can't just think about us in the present, but we also have to think about when we have our kids and our kids' kids, and what do we leave them in the future? Don't go anywhere, or I'll smash you. Jokes. <laughs> You're the famous fortune teller. No, it's um, Sione Manukau, the famous house cleaner. <laughs> Would you 
Won't you stop running? If pass. So, um, did you want your steak and chips on the same plate? No, I'll have my chips on the side if possible. Mm. Only if possible. Malo Freshies, we're still in Bristol, home of um, um, me. <laughs> Freshest thing I've done here in the UK. First time I saw it snowing here. Wearing our bare feet, shorts and a t-shirt. I saw snowboards start throwing it around. <laughs> oh, are we ready? Okay, cool. <clears throat> Welcome back to Where Are They Now? Washed Up or Cashed Up? Today, we're following TV's most famous character, Fortune Teller. She made an impact connecting people with the spiritual world, connecting them with lost ones. Some believe she was blessed by God himself, others by a demon. We want to know, where is Fortune Teller? Where is that pudgy-faced bearded woman? Where is she now? Let's go find her. Come, come with me. No, it's um, Sione Manukau, the famous house cleaner. Would you stop running? Hi, it's me, Lizzie, from Where Are These Famous People Now? I'm here to interview you. So you mean you're not from Wins? No, I'm not from Wins. Well, I'm still happy you're not for wins, eh? I know, you're scared of wins. No, it's just that I'm still on the benefit, but working at the same time. You might get caught. Well, yeah, but not today. Fair enough. Yeah. Tell us about these things. The frying pan. Oh, it's just the frying pan? Yeah, no, I was making breakfast before you came in. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it's also coming in because I don't have a comb. What happened to it? Um, it's comb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I use it, maybe. Yeah. So, of all the clients you've ever had, yeah, who's been your favourite? Uh, probably like Dwayne Chancer. Oh wow! Wow. So, what sort of um, reading did you give him? Uh, did well, you use the coins, your box? Oh no, I used I use our tarot cards. Oh, tarot cards. Yeah, cards. very special Where tarot cards. Where they from? Oh, this is from Plantation. That's okay. Well, then why don't we do a? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, let's do a reading. Okay. Okay. okay first, First, you have to put one hand here, yeah, and the other hand here on the, on the coin. You take that coin, yeah. You just go around like that. Yeah. Do I say that too? Yeah. You say Soroma Kapachi, Soroma Kapachi, Soroma Kapachi, and then you say Papa, 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 Papa. Okay. Soroma Kapachi. And then after that, my hands will like. I uh, feel the spirit. Yeah. And every card that I turn will explain certain parts of uh, his life. Okay. And the first card, this is the first card here. Is this it's the man. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That means when you go to the bathroom, yeah. don't go in this one. The next card okay. is. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Oh my gosh. Are you seeing someone at the moment? Um, Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. Okay. He well, doesn't know we are, but okay. I'm seeing him. Okay. Well, yeah. he's got children? Yes. Yeah, so don't, don't, oh. don't break up the family. Okay. Can, uh, next card? Yep. Oh, uh, okay. That's me? No, he's got a wife. Oh. Yeah, he's got a wife and a children. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But let's, let's see what else. Okay. Can... 
Oh, okay. You know <gasps> this guy here? Yeah, it's that for me. No, this this is my car I usually put in my room. Sorry, it's the wrong car. Okay, thank you. Are there more? Yeah, you are gonna grow old. Oh, okay, yeah. well, that's good. But that person behind you is trying to push you down the steps. But yeah, you've got no friends, no one likes you. Okay, thank you so much, Fortune Seller, for an amazing interview. Thank you. Your reading was a little bit dodgy, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> there you have it. Where are they now? Washed up or cashed up? Tune in with us next time where we will be interviewing. Well, you knew the answer. Uh, <laughs> <stop it. laughs> okay, bye, everyone. Uh, uh, Finished that. Awesome. Alright, so yeah. So what a boom shot this, what a eat and not a miss. If a man want this, he will catch up in me fish. Yeah, snake in a grass, who a is when him crisp. Yeah. Son a sexy guy, yeah. let me a put this. Boom shot this, what a eat and not a miss. If a man want this, he will catch up in me fish. Yeah. Well done, Freshies. We are from the UK. Hello, Pito. Chee-hoo! We are Supremacy! And we're here to keep it fresh at the National HHI Tam. Keep a fresh. Chee-hoo! Catch up in my face. Snake in the grass. You know me, I got is. When the guy Chris me, I give them kiss. It's a boom shot. This it is a hit and not a miss. Man want this, he will catch up in my face. Snake me a is. When the girl them Chris. When I sex, the girl let me a pop kiss. Get a patch. From when me come in, I got when I come a patch. So don't call me corona car for a patch. Me the pawn a mission with me verb. It's a rage. It no matter if it's mine. It no matter if it's mine. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.